Hello everyone, I'm Tracy Derwin, and in today's video, I'm gonna be going over some severe floods that have happened in the last week, and then share some of the research I have done on the various cloud seeding programs that are listed on the uh, NOAA website. And I was trying to figure out the correlation between the amount of chemicals put into the clouds and the increase in precipitation. So I'll be sharing that in the second half of this video. First, I wanna show uh, two severe floods, one in Boston and one in Chicago. Here's Boston. Expressway is underwater. And as you can see, several lanes really affected here. And that includes the HOV lane. So please be careful if you have to drive through this area in Milton. Try to avoid that area. Also try to avoid this in Braintree. Granite Avenue, closed near Wood Road. This area is flooded. You can see two cars there. Uh, and it looks like the water really has receded there, which is good news. All right, and here is a clip explaining just how rare this flood is. It's a one in 200 year flood, and we're seeing this all over the country and all over the world. This, what we're looking at here, uh, just how rare this rain event was with how much water we got in this short amount of time. So uh, from top to bottom, we're plotting here the inches of rain. So for Weymouth, this is, mm -hmm. we're talking about Weymouth yep. specifically here, six inches of rainfall, and then where it's intersecting there, this is a one in 200 year event. Yeah, so basically I chose a six hour period, and over that six hours, if you get, you know, we focused in on six inches, six hours, six inches of rain, and 200 years. So basically, on average, what happened in on the Southeast Expressway this morning in those areas that got six inches <laughs> yeah. happens about once every 200 years, or you have about a half of a percent chance each year of it happening. And, and this is in any given one point. So, I mean, needless to say, an historic event. Um, definitely something you don't see every day. Thank goodness we don't see it every day. Um, and that's for our six inch plus rainfall right. spots. I mean, still where we, there was other locations, well, one in 100 year exactly. rainfall totals. Right. Yep, so uh, just a, cr a crazy morning. And, I, and we have been seeing more and more of these type extreme events. Like you said, it's been pretty dry for the last like four to six weeks, but when it, it feels like now when it rains, it pours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, and here's a clip from Chicago. Now, Chicago has flooded, but this amount of flooding is unusual. Western in Ogden, you can see flooded viaducts left roads impassable. There was even a car and an SUV left partially submerged. While many of the drivers decided to ditch their cars, some waited for tow trucks while others just bailed altogether. Okay, and I'll just play a quick clip from Rui Doso. Okay, the Boston one was on the 10th of July. The next day on the 11th of July is when Chicago happened and New Mexico happened on the 10th of July. So yeah, a lot of really, really unusual severe flooding going on here. And I'll show you, And Rui Doso has been flooding in the past year and also experienced a very big fire about a year and a half ago, uh, shortly after the Maui fire. Take a look at this. We have unbelievable video of a house torn from its foundation and just floating away in those rushing waters. The Rio Rio Doso River also uh, rose 19 feet in a matter of minutes during that heavy rainfall. The mayor of Rio Doso spoke about how fast that flood came and the sheer power that it brought. It's hard to imagine the power of water, and I know you've seen it here before. People have seen what's happened in Central Texas, Burn County, uh, Kerrville, places like that, just how powerful the water is. But it just snaps some of these big concrete heads off these uh, manholes. It goes to the sewer. It just snaps them off. All right, by late last. All right, so that's a more recent Ruidoso flood. Uh, I did a video, I'll link it in this description of the uh, serious flooding that happened in a surrounding city in Roswell, New Mexico. And that happened last year. Now I looked up a lot of information. I've been using the last two days to find out um, a lot about cloud seeding, you know, how they, how the operations are done, 
um, how much of silver iodide is used to create, you know, X amount of increased pre precipitation. Um, here is one clip. It's a short, but it's it's going to be really narrow. I'm sorry, I didn't edit it yet. But here is what one of the plain operations for cloud seeding looks like. So I flip this to L2, and then I bring this to one, and fire. Now look at that. So that is how the flares are deposited into the clouds using these um, silver iodide flares. Um, from what I can tell, they usually contain between 40 and 60 grams per flare. And they also are claiming to put in between one and 20 flares per cloud to increase precipitation. Now here's another clip of a ground seeding operation. So you can also put these chemicals in the sky from um, ground, you know, these towers on the ground. It's time to set off the flare. The primary seeding agent in this is silver iodide. Silver iodide is a simple compound. It's polar in nature like water. So there's chemical properties that help attract water molecules to silver iodide. It's also structured molecularly similar to ice. So it helps generate or helps spawn the generation of ice buildup. And then that becomes a hellstone or a snowflake that falls here primarily as rain. So one flare like this has billions and billions of potential sites for that water to congregate around. We'll launch them in sequences. We watch the radar to see when bands of the highest concentration of liquid water are passing above us in the clouds and we try to target those high concentration pockets in the storm systems. Uh, we'll launch between three and 20 flares for a typical storm. Once the flare is lit, it takes a little bit of time to carry up into the clouds. And once it's up at, at the proper elevation, it'll take about 20 minutes to instigate the rain or the snow process. Uh, so overall, you're probably looking at about 40 to 45 minutes before you're seeing the maximum result. And that's why we're stationed miles away from our target area. So we have very specific targets that, that drain directly into major water basins. And we time these events to correlate with rain above those intended targets. One of the biggest questions or most common questions that we receive uh, relates to the safety of silver iodide. Silver is biologically inert, so it will not interact in a negative fashion with plant or animal life. Iodine is actually a critical building block of a number of hormones in animals, so it is safe as well. In fact, if you look at table salt or baby formula, you'll see iodine in its molecular form as an additive in those. Okay, so that's a ground-based operation. Now he says towards the end of that, that is an incorrect. These chemicals are not silver and iodine. It's silver iodide. It's a completely different molecule than what he was saying just there. He said it's silver and iodine that is in baby formula. Never once did I see those uh, elements listed in any of the cloud seeding operations on the website. Now, let me pull up some of uh, the reports that I found on the NOAA website. Now, every company that is planning So every company needs to submit a plan for what they, you know, what the operation is going to entail, you know, what kind of flares, how much uh, of chemicals are in the flares, how many flares per cloud. They usually go between one and 20 flares per cloud, how they intend to get them there, either the ground or in a plane. Um, I think I saw one where it looked like it was a drone that was depositing the silver iodide. There are also other chemicals, and I'll just pull some up right here. Okay, this one just has a silver iodide. And I could not figure out 
um, any kind of correlation between the amount, uh, the grams of silver iodide and the increased precipitation. It's just all over the place, okay? So for example, look at this one, the uh, 8,719 grams in the month of June, increased pre precipitation by five inches and reduced hail by four. I don't know what the four, what uh, measurement that is, but then if you look at the next month, they increased the grams of silver iodide to 12,590 grams and there was only a one inch increase in precipitation. Here's another one. This ended in uh, April of last year. So you can see here the silver iodide was uh, over 29,000 grams and increased precipitation by seven inches in the month of January. And then they reduced it and there was a drop and then they reduced it uh, significantly for the month of March and there was a drop but here, like I'll show you this one, these numbers are way lower. I mean, this one only had 33 grams and it increased precipitation by an inch and then they increased it and it, it did. But as you can see here, it really varies. Okay, here is another example of the amounts and I think there are just a lot of other factors that affect these results. And here's another one, 71,000 grams, increased precipitation by seven. Okay, this one's from Texas. Okay, so like this one is a good example. In February, they started out with 360 grams with a one inch increase. The next month, they increased it to 1,584 grams with only a one inch increase. And then they went up to 2,160 grams, also with only a one inch increase. And then they, five times that, they put over 11,000 grams and that went up to seven inches. And then, you know, it's not, I could not really um, nail down a correlation because Every operation is so vastly different and the amounts vary significantly. See like this month of July, almost 30 grand, 30,000 grams. So these, uh, these documents are public information. And then really quick, I'll, I'll pull up the no website and I'll link this in the description as well. And this is what you could expect to see. These are all the different, uh, these are applications as well as reports, final reports. They have to send a final report 45 days after it commences. And then you'll see what the results are. And so there are many, not every state does this. Certain states seem to have a lot. North Dakota has a lot. New Mexico has them. California has a significant amount. Texas has a significant amount. Uh, Colorado has a significant amount. A lot of the areas that are for um, tourism during the winter, like skiing and snowboarding, there's a lot of uh, increased snowfall uh, operations. And I guess that makes sense. They, they want people to come visit these areas. That's what these economies depend on is the winter tourism. So I notice a lot of those areas like Vail, Colorado, parts of Idaho, um, a lot of the snow. Um, regarding the rain, there are also various reasons for these operations, one being to um, increase the groundwater. I saw that a number of times. Um, there's also some that are to fill the dams or lakes, I guess, to increase the, the lake levels. Um, there's also like smaller operations and there are very large operations. Some also want to reduce hail and um, so there are, there are different, um, I guess, objectives that cloud seeding has. So it's not really straightforward. Um, it's a little more complicated than I think we've been led to believe. 
And the same with weather modification. There are many factors, many different systems that are in place that are affecting our weather today, including NEXRED, towers. I'll link a post from Alaska Sky Watcher. Um, and it's just, I think the reason this topic is, you know, it's been going for a while. And I think there's been an attempt to focus in on one person and one company. And what that does is it takes away from the overall picture. And the overall picture is so much more complicated than simply cloud seeding. These systems, I think, interact and work together or maybe sometimes against each other. I can't fully understand every um, aspect of this, but um, for the past about year and a half, I have been learning about them little by little. But again, it is a much more complicated problem than we would like to admit. And I'll link a video with the weather modification programs that have been going on for the past decades, all the way back to Operation Storm Fury, which was over, I think, over 60 years ago, and Operation Popeye, which increased rainfall during the Vietnam War. So there's just a lot of information that needs to be understood in order to understand what's going on. And I wish it wasn't so complicated, but the fact of the matter is that it is. So uh, that's going to do it for today. I'll continue to watch um, all these floods. There, there are more since I've been researching these that I've show, showed today. And I will share my information and my research as I go. So thank you guys so much for being here, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.